Welcome to Uncaged. Today we're speaking with Evan Schwartz. Evan is the Chief Enterprise Architect at AMCS Group, which is a scalable technology solutions company built for enhanced efficiency and increased productivity in the waste and recycling complex logistics and utilities industries. Tell us a little bit about you, Evan, and your career. Um, I started very early in my life. Um, I started my first company when I was 16 years old. I got That's into awesome. gaming. Um, I'm the son of an Oklahoma farmer who has no sense of technology whatsoever and um, spent the summer building some online games for something as archaic as called BBSs, Bulletin Board Systems. <laughs> you may or may not be familiar with yes. those dial-up war game type systems. And uh, that really took off. Um, my, my father didn't believe that this technology thing, it was a fad, it was just going to blow over. Nobody's going to be using computers in 10 years. Um, but after I released my first product and went down to the post office and pulled a big bag of checks out of the post office, I was hooked and I have been hooked on creation and creation of value ever since. That's uh, great. I got and, pulled into, yeah. oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. So from there, I got pulled into the business sector. I realized that, uh, I did not have two to three million dollars of budget to really make it into the gaming industries that went into the internet and in the business sector thrived across a lot of the environmental and commodity based industries. Um, got into uh, natural gas, water, uh, deregulated gas, building systems and billing systems around that. Got into virgin fiber, got into the paper industry. Um, from the paper industry, the crossover from the energy was that a lot of paper plants generate electricity for people. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, and then after getting in the paper industry for 10 years, uh, that crossed over into the recycle industry. And then from the recycle industry, doing the same thing, building these ERP, full enterprise level systems, customer service management systems, um, ultimately through a variety of different partnerships and companies have landed here at AMCS Group. Wow. I mean, what an incredible career. And I love the pathway from some video games as a teenager all the way to big systems at a company like AMCS handling some pretty major issues. So tell me a little bit about your life as a chief enterprise architect at AMCS and what you and the team are focused on. So look, I'll you would expect that a lot of enterprise systems at a global level um, will face similar enterprise level challenges, but when you put it at a global scale, going across multiple countries, multiple cultures, uh, it becomes very interesting to see how individual countries uh, approach a zero waste or recycling or a circular economy type of approach. They're, they're yeah. trying to get to the net same result. But one of the things I like to remind my customers about this is that, look, you may all be in the same industry and do the same business, but you all will do it very, very differently. And having an enterprise level system that's flexible enough, configurable enough to be able to meet compliancy within those regions and those global areas, to be able to have the flexibility to offer differentiators to our customers to be able to do that business as it's moving more and more to a service oriented structure out to customers mm -hmm. and being able to have ESG and EHS as critical components that are driving the business model to a circular economy is, is really where the crux of architecture is. And that's where I sit within the company is developing a system that meets business needs, does it efficiently, and is designed at a level that's flexible enough to be able to meet all of the incredible amounts of compliances, security, the ability to take payments and, and be able to issue payments across a variety of different bottle, uh, business models as you know, we're paying for material to be brought in, we're reprocessing the material and selling it out as finished goods. To be able to build a system that does that end to end that is operable across 27 countries. Wow. Um, architecture is really where it starts. Yeah. Flexibility and robustness. No, it's a 
huge missing piece and it's needed. You know, I think over the last couple of years, we've heard a lot of companies focus on sustainable business goals, kind of what you said is essentially kind of zero waste goals, ESG goals, ESG policies now, things that not only are extending throughout their businesses, but going to vendors, et cetera. Tell me where you think we are in this pathway, because I truly see you're right in the middle of it all. Look, you you go back not even 10 years, and you probably wouldn't find a single piece of tax sitting on a standard waste hauling vehicle. And in today's world, they're basically mobile data centers. There's more Mm. technology on your average waste truck than was in the first shuttle that went or the first rocket that went to the moon. Uh, They're mobile data centers, they're collecting video, they're collecting sensors across the board. So where we're moving is in a reusable circular economy where we're not just recycling things, but we're finding ways to reuse them, refurbish them, repair them, get them back in. We're seeing waste companies moving into this space to be able to figure out how to repair this material. All of that takes the same kind of logistics. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at waste avoidance. Yeah. How can we get all the way back out to the production side of this? So we're seeing a lot of our, our recycling environmental services companies moving into the production side where they're getting into retail aspects of refurbishing and reselling material. All of that takes logistics and processing. And because of the sheer amount of data, we're looking for ways to build efficiency. We're putting AI on top of it. So the ability to take in that data and build hyper automation or automated reasoning on top of these to automate some of the solutions. And we can think really the last events uh, or the events of the last couple of years, which is driving some of these changes, is we had a bit of a shakeup. You may have heard about it. The global pandemic has changed some of the landscape around some of our businesses. And the the waste recycling environmental services industries uh, is a unique industry where they have some administrative services where remote is capable. But a lot of it is boots on the ground, driving a truck, container, managing that logistics. Being able yep. to do that as efficiently as possible is, is tapping and putting stresses on AI automation, being able to adapt to changes. As you can imagine, we went from everyone going to work every day to now everyone running a business from their, their couch off of a mobile phone virtually overnight. Yeah. A system that's flexible enough to manage those changes in workflows, to go to a full digitalization to be able to put AI and advanced reasoning and common sense to automate processes where I have a reduced workforce or mm-hmm. I had an early retirement process. You know, we're, we're seeing a lot of considerations across our companies, our customers, where their senior personnel with a lot of tribal knowledge went into early retirement. And wow. so now those companies are, how can I capture those processes? How can I model those processes, just not within my ERP system, but across my entire ecosystem? So I, I, need, yeah. I need a solution that's going to fit well and be able to model my processes and allow that level of automation and efficiency. And that, that you know, I, I never that's thought cool. about that, Evan. It is true. I've seen that across many, many business verticals. There were a lot of people that basically just said, I'm done. I'm out. Yeah. (laughs) Good luck. (laughs) You know, the idea that there's a lot of knowledge there that gets somehow lost is absolutely true. Uh, And finding ways to kind of hold on to that, as well as this push to really kind of find those, uh, as you said, circular or holistic types of solutions that really allow you to think about recyclables in a ways that perhaps we haven't thought about in the past. I know that I worked uh, on a big project with a large packaged goods company, and we reminded them how many cardboard boxes they use to ship mm. their products. And perhaps they could be used more than once. And it was like a eureka moment for them. And uh, in the industry where we're moving to the electrification of everything. Yeah. You know, have we thought about how we're recycling all of these batteries in electric cars? Have we thought about the refurbishment? Can you just take a Tesla and throw it into a car cruncher and grind it up? You can't. Mm -hmm. What do you do? How do you harvest that e-waste? Right. So the world is changing so fast now. You almost need a system that can change in real time as changes are coming at you 
if you're going to be able to adapt and evolve your business. So those are kinds of the challenges that we're facing in trying to put tools in the hands of our customers to be able to adapt very quickly to a world that it seems like every day we wake up, there's some brand new requirement or some brand new, if you look at just how, how old chat GPT is and it's changing industries. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it's incredible the breadth of activities that you have, and certainly it is at that core of what I would say is that sustainability global change that every business is trying to reshape and rethink. But let me change gears here a bit, Evan, and ask you a little bit more of kind of a personal question, I suppose, which is, you know, what gets you up in the morning? What keeps you going on this? I mean, you've been on this amazing tech journey for your whole life, but and now you're focused in this area. What's your big uh, passion? So it, look, this goes back to the beginning when I wrote that first game and realized that people would send me a $30 check for something I built that I, you know, to the point my father thought it was a scam because I could make an unlimited number of copies because he didn't understand the concept of digital, right? right? As that's evolved, if you were to follow my entire career, I literally got hooked and passionate about value creation. Yeah. Uh, the move into the ability to create value around the transport of energy or utilities, and then moved into the wood industry, which, you know, 20 years ago was largely virgin fiber. We grew a tree on right. land, cut it down and turned it into a box, has shifted more to secondary reckle and OCC cardboard. But you can only do that so often. And that's value creation from the land. We're growing that tree. If you look at it today, Every single log truck you see on the road is just the growth of trees from that year. You yeah, know, we're not cutting any new trees down that we haven't grown. We're in fact planting more. That's a huge win to me. You know, yeah. and AMCS is driving that even further, getting in continued value creation out of recycling, environmental services, and waste. And our our motto is digital ways to a cleaner world. Right? How can we add technology? positively to the world that is creating a net positive for everybody. And that gets me up in the morning. Yeah, right? I love that. that I, I love that. I love the optimistic yeah. ideal there and the key, it making the beauty of your career is that you've actually been able to play a key role in making that happen and you continue to do so. So, I mean, as we look forward here in 2023, what you work on is really at the center of a lot of discussions today. What's on the docket for you and the team? It's really about efficiencies, automation, data analytics, tracking, and being able to apply AI models to things to add efficiency. So again, we're trying to get the most out of the assets we have and be able to reduce the impact to the environment. So we've made investments in a company called Quintech to be able to mm -hmm. do the ESG and to be able to do the tracking. We've invested heavily in AI. We're investing heavily in workflow modeling to be able to shift things. We have optimization on the road. We've got an army of people looking for ways to shave off the number of gallons of gas, to shave off having to print one more piece of paper, shave yeah. off a way to have reuse. How can I use a barcode rather than printing a piece of paper that has something on it? Right. Yeah. I want to have waste avoidance. Can our technology get us there? Can yeah. that customer interact with it, their customer, interact with my customer over a portal? And there's no bill. I don't have to print a bill, put it into an envelope and mail it. Can we can we take these things out of circulation? So those are the drives for 2023 is 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 basically empowering our customers with unparalleled automation workflow, adaptability, and to be able to add AI in ways to get efficiency that no one's even seen before, right? Yeah. Looking at their data in ways that right now we don't even have the capacity to look at and see insights into it. So we're yeah. rolling out here in 2023, a set of new services that are, are just, I'm going to tell you when even five years ago was would have blown my mind to think that we're doing it and we're rolling it out this year. So I'm extremely excited to see it. Wow. It's so interesting because you're right. There's probably millions, maybe billions of micro efficiencies that can be tweezed out through the use of technology, as well as obviously some macro plays that can have huge benefits as well. Evan, it's incredible to hear all the stuff that you guys are working on. If someone wanted to learn more about what AMCS and the team are doing, where's the best place to reach you? 
Oh, obviously, go to our website. All the contact information uh, for your region, amcsgroup.com, is the easiest way to reach out to us. Um, you'll find um, someone from your local region, depending on where you are in the world. We we operate globally. Uh, we'll have someone be able to reach out to you and talk to you and be able to really uh, listen to what your business is trying to do. And we're we're more than just selling a piece of software. Right. Mm -hmm. We're principal consultants. We're partners on your business. Yeah. So we want to look at across all aspects of your business. And even if it just means that we're only going to fill one little piece and we become part of the overall enterprise, we can do that, too. So we really look holistically at your business from an as is and to a to be and then and give you really the best opportunities for us to make an impact positively to create positive business outcomes for you. Yeah, I mean, it's a, an incredible story. It's an incredible area that you and the AMCS group are playing in. We've been speaking with Evan Schwartz. He is the Chief Enterprise Architect at AMCS Group. They're a company focused on waste management software and recycling software. Evan, thank you so much for being on the Uncaged Show. Sure. We look forward to having you back. All right. Thank you. Cheers.